Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, so we've been, I mean, not to give all the secrets, but um, obviously, like, if you split something to a certain dimension, you get everything kind of even and consistent. But um, the way we've been doing a lot of back etching, so we've been, like, cutting a lot from the back side and etching these, like, these channels, these fold channels in. So it's like a, like, you would V-skive something, but we can do it in the middle of the part again, it takes a little bit longer to be able to etch that away, but like, yeah, to deal with the inconsistencies, the rigidity changes, all that, it's like, we're basically just forcing folds and forcing fold locations by either skiving or, you know, what we call like this, like etch skive, something like that. Does that answer your question? Is that what you're... I was actually more of uh, trying to get to the... Uh, that That is interesting and helpful. I was trying to m more point out the fact that leather is another one of those variables that we're talking about what makes something great. And it's, there's so many variables in the manufacturing process, but even in the material, there's many other variables that you, you might not be aware of, but the leather, sure. when you order it from the tanner, you'll probably notice that there's a range of thickness that you can prescribe. You're never going to get exactly two millimeters. For example, it's always sure. you know, right. 1.8 to two or two to yeah. 2.2. That range of 0.2 millimeters is significant enough for that wrap to be completely different mm -hmm. uh, around your your part. And I was asking, you know, can you use your compensation software to uh, to tune that? But that seems pretty crazy because, like, yeah, even within not, a square foot, you're going to get like slightly, slightly different thicknesses. You can't give us 0.2 millimeters. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We have um, we have a Fortuna splitter at our factory and we just like split material back to whatever dimension that we want, you know, for, for consistency. How wide is your Fortuna? Is it like a 16? Like 16. Yeah. 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 yeah the, the knives that Nick used, how big are you? Like 70. They're huge. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The, the, the more narrow the splitting machine, the more precise, precise. you can get. Yeah. We yeah. can only get, and, and there's different setups for different firmness of leather and, what you're trying to do and if it's wet or if it's dry is it's crazy it's it doesn't it doesn't make any it's such an unnatural thing to do to take something that's soft and like shove it against a knife to try to make it <laughs> uniform it doesn't want to be doesn't want to doesn't want to do anything that you're doing to it cool i mean cordovan i think is the thing that freaks out the most because there's so like if i'm splitting cordovan like it can it'll go from like super thin and then it'll find like if, if it enters in a soft spot it'll get pushed out where it's like a bit more callous rather than like, if there's, I, know, I wouldn't say that there's any skin left on there, you know, I'm not trying to <laughs> say that, but um, no, but you know, there's splitting is annoying. I mean, it's crazy. And, and also, so that's another thing, you know, I'm working with a machine that's, that's not its only purpose is not my line. So I have to like go in and I have to tune this machine and make sure that it's working correctly. It like, is the material, does it want a roller? Does it want a bar? What do you want to do? Oh, it's like, even that, like this expensive, nice machine that's supposed to work every time. It doesn't always work every time. So, so yeah, I mean, it's like, how do we compensate for it? I mean, I think that there's variation, there's variation to, our products because they are handmade, you know? Um, it's it's funny when you get a project, and I'm sure you guys know this more than anyone, but um, like people are so used to corrected grain that when they see anything, they see any flank, any fat, any, you know, any scratches or variation, they're just like, what is this? This is not nice. And I go, no, this is actually nice. This is not, you know, it's, this isn't like a coating of vinyl on top of something that vaguely resembles a hide, you know, it's like, it's a completely different, I, I understand consistency, like a long time ago, this is like ages ago, but Rolls-Royce wanted us to do something and they wanted us to make it out of their material. And when we got it, it was like, it was just like, it fell so flat. Like this is like, you know, beautiful, real pebbled leather they're using in their cars, but it, the dimension was so thin and there was just no character. And there was no, like, I think the thing that people don't really understand about your, I mean, pull up is a, it's huge. I mean, it's, it makes things beautiful. Like even just like the, you know, the, the tonality shifts, the, the, all of those things, like, especially when you have a really simple product, all of those lead to the, to the final. And, um, and even like the resistance of the material, like when, like the volume that's created when you fold something or, you know, if like, I would love to use some of these like myco, you know, like the, the mushroom leathers or like the cactus leathers, like I've investigated them, but they just, they absolutely don't work. They don't look dynamic. They don't look 
beautiful. They just kind of the 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 grain structure in real leather. I mean, cordovan is my absolute favorite, but favorite. But like the grain structure is what gives the character and the and the body to the products. And I feel like I feel like yeah. I mean, it's 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 hard to achieve in in these other materials. And that's what I mean. That's why real leather is what it is. That's why people love it. That's why it's you know it is a beautiful it's a beautiful thing. Cordovan is like the most like I don't even consider myself like a real crazy leather person like I know a lot about it because Nick has explained so much to me you know but like I there isn't a better product than Cordovan in my opinion like I just think it's like the most beautiful crazy material it's just it's crazy I mean it's it's a crazy very unique yeah it's crazy to make it and it's crazy to use it it's not easy to work with I tell people I mean once it's made into something it's really it you know lasts basically forever but it's, I mean, that's, it's not easy to work with and, or make no, I mean, or it, it cracks it. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it's, it's so neat again, energy transfer. If we want to get some real comments flowing, you know, it's like, it's uh like, it's a really, it has a different, I mean, the density is so obvious, you know, like it, you can just tell it's, it's a different thing. You can just tell, you know, I think some people confuse it for like, I've, I've had someone go like, this feels like plastic. Is this fake? And I'm just like, no, it's not fake. No. I think that there's a really interesting thing that you're touching on that, that I think about often is our society and maybe the world as a whole has been conditioned to what you're talking about and, and you feel is an inferior product where it's very flat. There's not much dimension, as you put it, to the color. And something like the car interiors, it almost kind of has to be that way. And the, sure. we just recorded an episode before this, and that car upholstery came up. And you kind of have to have a little bit more performance in certain things. But uh, oh. for, for like a deeper point for manufacturing, it's it got to be an incredible challenge for a company like Apple, for example. And I know that you've done some, uh, I think you've done some iPad sleeves for Apple. To make yeah, it, we did like backwards sleeves. Yeah. yeah, to do like a consistent color, consistent character every time and make many hundreds of thousands of a thing, that's got to be an impossible challenge with a natural aniline dyed leather core, whatever. You're never going to get two hides that are, that are the same, let alone like two square feet on a piece of Dublin, for example. It, it's just not possible. So I, I get the reason why it's happened. It's that sort of globalization. Like let's make as much stuff as most as efficiently as possible. You have to be full painted finishes, and that's now what we're conditioned to seeing. So when you when somebody shows you when you show your customer a piece of chrome Excel, they're like, "That's not leather," or you know, show them some sort of aniline less finished piece of of leather. Yeah, yeah. I could see why the confusion happens is because it's novel; it, it doesn't exist anymore. Well, let's take the customer experience is completely taken out. I mean, it's like it almost it almost doesn't matter who's buying it because it's the same. It doesn't you don't need to explain it because it's just it is just is what it is. It's not. I mean, there's nothing natural about it where it's so it's it doesn't. People don't. It's just not as interesting to people. But then their expectations are completely different too. So if there's any change about it at all, then they just they just freak out. At yeah. the end of the day, though, like if somebody likes a thing, I'm not going to fight them on it. Like if you like that, that's awesome. Mm. Like that, to oh, me, sure. that's what it is. At the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, I do think it's like you know, if you are going for a natural material and you're going for crazy consistency, then you just the amount of waste that you produce just goes up so much. You know, it's like you're throwing away anything that has any character. So if you if you just completely coat this thing in like in vinyl and then you apply some, you know, specific graining pattern or a graphic or that, I mean, it's that to me is like it's like, you know, bad stucco job or like a bad like drywall job. It's just like you're you're covering over layers of poor craftsmanship. You know what I mean? Like you're just it's like. It, it totally makes sense, but I think a lot of a lot of the stuff that we that we get in this world is is the way that it is because of all of those parameters and those variables. It's like you know we end up with like um, I mean yeah I mean like a, a, an inexpensive home. You know you see like bad crazy trim everywhere and like stuccos covering everything and and you know you got like popcorn ceiling because no one put the drywall up correctly and you know it's just like that's kind of what it is. You're, you're you're instead of like training people to do things better, you're like adding in more fail safes to allow for like poor quality, you know? So, yeah, I mean, it's, 
at the end of the day, it really just comes down to like, I mean, this is all of this is like an incredibly like privileged conversation. You know what I mean? Like we're, <laughs> we're, we're talking about like things that we're talking about, like, like our, our incredibly specific desires or whatever, you know, but I mean, that's, that is, I mean, that, that is what, like, that's what life is though. It's like, it's preference, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, it's weird. It's like, there's this, I had a teacher in college that adopted a child from China. And I, I don't know why I always remember this, but he was just saying the, the city center is incredibly wealthy. As you got away from the city, it became like destitute people that were serving the city. And then the further out into the country you get, the 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 less people money sorry the less money people have but the but the kind of like wealthier they actually are like they've got everything they need they've got all the food they need they've got you know kind of they've got all the basic things taken care of and i and i think that that with like traditional craft you're kind of more in that world you've got people really caring about things you've got you know these are beautiful objects that have taken time to develop and to make uh you know and then you've got that's like in, in the country and then you've got in the city beautiful things that are incredibly expensive and then you've got this weird void in the middle where it's like you almost can't care here or that you don't have enough like know-how like going out towards the country it's like a very interesting thing it's, it's not i don't think it's like socioeconomic i think it literally is about how much time you have to care about the the very specific elements of your world you know it's like you have enough money in one one area and then you've got enough time in the other area does that make sense at all yeah it's kind of a weird, a weird rant but it's just like it's you know it's yeah it's weird it just seems like you either have to be incredibly privileged uh with money or you have to be incredibly privileged with time right to kind of focus on on all of this stuff that we're that we're into you know 100 percent 